Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Yeah, thanks for calling me back, Rich. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you, you seem like you're extremely knowledgeable on this subject, uh, and I'm hoping you can help me. I have a uh, Primus key. Uh, it's a SC, um, uh, where is it again? The um, uh, 35157 uh, with a CP pathway, but, well, um, but maybe you can help me narrow down exactly which type of key it is, because I, I, a lot of this information is so obscure, it seems. Um, well, it's not obscure. It's <clears throat> understand digesting it is not straightforward. Mm. It's not. It's anything but obscure. I mean, they 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 publish an entire service manual for Primus. Well, I've looked at it. I I can I cannot for the life of me determine how or see how one determines if it's an XT versus a classic Primus. Uh, well, that'll that'll be obvious because the XP is going to look different in term. It'll physically be different. Um, so, and that that should be something that's obvious in the manual. Uh oh. Uh, okay, well, it wasn't, but you're talking about the the actual head of the key, or whatever it's called, the part that says Schlage oh. on it, and the bow of the key is, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, mine seems to match the classic yeah, yeah format, sure. but, uh, uh, so I'm pretty sure it's that, then. Um, uh, I tried buying some blanks and cutting it myself, I'm certainly no... Uh, key smiths here and they failed so either I am just not very good at it or the um, bidding on the um, side section is is different which it does look a little bit different to me from the blanks that I ordered mm -hmm. um, yeah. so is there obscure biddings or is there basically one nationwide bidding for these keys That's also something that I couldn't quite figure out. Yeah, so that part is, you know, if you're in the business or if you are a locksmith or you're a certified professional locksmith like me, it's yeah. it is it's more easy to understand. So the bottom line is this. You can have a C keyway. That C keyway is going to enter any broaching that will take a C primus. Um, and in fact, it'll go into any classic C as well. So it'll go into key, it'll go into the broached cylinders at our C back to the night back before World War II. The um, and that's not unusual at all. The, the the keyway and there should be I think there are probably seven of them would be my guess. But where Schlag creates um, the unique uh, keyway is a combination of the broaching in the cylinder. But the finger pins that are installed in the cylinder plug, which are directly related to the side bit milling, and you've got left, right, and center cuts, and then you've got different depths. So if you can discern visually that the side bit milling on the existing is different than the one that you ordered or got, then the hunt is up. I mean, pack it up and go home. And what that means is there are different levels, and the only one that you can buy without producing any paperwork is level one. I can sell you level one. So your system is certainly not level one if you can discern the difference in the side bit milling. Uh, which means, yes, so I can, yeah. So I yeah, don't which means you can't get that key blank easily and you may not be able to get it at all. Um, whoever established the system originally needs to be a part of the process. So. I get I get this call often from someone who's got a condo around Christmas time and they want to pass out the key to Uncle Joe and the 15 cousins. Well, it turns out the condo people spent thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars possibly on a key system so that you can't just hand out copies. So, if you can if you've got a way to cut the key, punch it or however you did it, 
if you can't duplicate the physical key blank, that's where they that's that's where you're you're shut out of um, extending the system. Well, not extending the system, but cutting a key um, when you're not authorized to do so is the bottom line. Yeah. Okay. Well. Oh, well, that's grim. My situation is uh, it is a a commercial building, and I have an office here. One of the uh, tenants in my office, uh, I. Uh, who work with me here, uh, she seems to have lost her key to the front door and the landlord will, uh, require all the doors be rekeyed as a result and, uh, new locks, new keys be handed out to everybody, which is, so let's, let's, $1,500 or more. And that's why yeah. I'm in this predicament, which it seems let's attack that. Let, let's attack okay. that. So, do, do you or do your your tenant have one key that opens the front door and a different key that opens their office, or is it the same key? Uh, different keys. Okay. And the front, so, the front door one is one that is has been lost, and that's the high security yeah, key. We would call that maison keying, um, or you know, improperly called common keying. Did the did the person tell you that you would have to rekey all of the cylinders or only that one? There are two doors that, well, actually, no, there's, so th there are quite a few doors, actually, that use that cylinder, but of varying levels of security, so. Uh, so there, there are quite a few doors that use that key, you mean? Correct, yeah, so okay. there's uh, probably like five doors that use that key. Not all of them I can get into. But some of them are for bathrooms, common bathrooms, yeah. and the front door and the back door of the building. It's not a huge building, but it's you know big enough that it's, it would be a rigmarole to change it all out. Uh, so I mean, yeah. it's very likely that there's a key for your office, and then you've got the common key. You can get in the building, you can, you can go to the bathroom, and you know whatever, maybe one other room or whatever, a mailbox, you know, a parcel lockup room. It would be it would it would be not unreasonable for someone to say that those common area doors need to be rekeyed. That would not be unreasonable. But but if I understood the what you said in terms of rekeying all of them, including office doors, if that's true, then that would be unreasonable in my opinion. Unless no. of course that person lost the master key. No. No, no, she just had a regular key, just exactly like I have. And, right on. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, aside from the landlord's policy on this, which I don't think there's any chance of anybody ever recovering that key and then figuring out which building it belonged to, but he wants to redo the keys to everybody as a result of this one missing, which, I mean, I appreciate the security concerns there. Um, but does that mean even office doors that never operated off that key? No, that just means building doors. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and, then, and then new keys to everybody in the building. Uh, yeah. So we're definitely. looking at probably $2,000 or so how, every time how, how a key you, gets lost. How did you come to $2,000? He said it would be about $1,000 to redo the locks on the front and back door. I'm in Virginia, by the way, not in Florida. So the prices might be a bit different here. But uh and then handing out new keys to everybody in the building. I don't know what a... I'm, I'm guesstimating at it, but I imagine they're probably fifty to hundred dollars per key for whoa, one of these. Whoa, whoa. But maybe they're less. No. You know? no, 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 no. So how so? How many cylinders do you think will need to get rekeyed? Two that are the exterior and vestibule. Two for bathrooms, right? What else you got? Uh, that's well. Then there's a there's a storage closet that I can't get into that I believe uses that a, a higher level of that well you wouldn't key. need to rekey that if the common key doesn't work it oh okay okay well actually so um, he probably wants one key for everything I would think true uh, but itself. yeah that's true but um, that's not the way that the science of locksmithing works um, oh. so 
so so far we're at four cylinders. How many would you guess total? That would that would use that how common key. No, how many cylinders did that common key operate? Do you think? Okay, well I, I know for sure four. So okay, okay. Uh, let's, may, let's just let's say, just say yeah. four. Okay, so if you walked in the front door of my business and if I charged you twenty five dollars or more for that, there's going to be an afterlife conscience problem for the old <laughs> car. So so let's just establish that. If you were to buy from me a box of key blanks, um, you're probably about $300 for a box of 50 key blanks. Now, this guy certainly has a relationship with a locksmith who uh -huh. someone certainly has back stock of his key blank with his side bit milling. Correct. Now, yeah. if he doesn't, if, if they're out of stock, let's just say that he actually has to order more just because of this. Yeah, you're going to be about 300 bucks for a box of 50 blanks, maybe 400. But at the end of the day, I would tell the guy to his face that you refuse to pay those exorbitant rip-off prices because you spoke to a locksmith today, and he's welcome to call me, or his locksmith is welcome to call me, and I can explain to them the science of locksmithing because I get it. You know, you you, you can't have a key for the common area pool for your for Uncle Joe. That's not the way the association works because then every Uncle Joe is going to have a key. But in this scenario where all you need to do is correct the unintentional error, you will do so happily, but you will not do so in a prone position. That's my opinion. Right. Yeah, yeah it, it, it is ringing the bells of being extortionate to me. I'm not knowledgeable yeah, enough to know for sure that it is. But I, I, <laughs> I'm certainly, <laughs> yeah, well, and you know what worries me more is that people lose keys. So this is liable to happen again. I may have to pay well over a thousand dollars each time this happens or have the people I'm with. It's just, it does, it's not, I mean, I don't like it as a permanent solution, even if I, you know, if, anyway, um, so it sounds like I don't want to use up too much of your time and, or go on to a rant about any of this. From a technical standpoint, it sounds like it might be a particular side bidding that is going to be nearly impossible for me to get without a license. No, I, no, not a license because you won't be able to um, produce and submit to the factory for their visual review paperwork that matches the paperwork on file. It could also be whoever the landlord, the billing owner, uses as the locksmith, they may own that side bit milling, and they, which means they have their own keyway. So even if I could get, I could get, if I saw information about your key system, I could find out from the factory who that locksmith is or who that, where that property is. But that doesn't mean I can get my hands on the property because as a locksmith, I'm going to want to have my own keyway so I can sell it to the building owner so that all future business funnels back to me. That's the way this is done. Uh, and that and that actually is a good thing in the sense that this guy who's got millions of dollars, let's say, tied up in his, in his real estate, he doesn't want you to lose keys. He doesn't want you to give them out, nor should he. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, no, I appreciate so that. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah, and, and the only thing that sounds like is wonky is what you're going to have to pay to get this done. Um, yeah. So, so you know, it's, around a thousand dollars for two doors. Does that uh, the front door and the back door? Does that sound very high to you to have them re-keyed? It's, it's exceptionally extortionist. It is okay. Good. Well, at least. <sighs> Okay. Those well, I, will... I would say to him, <laughs> exceptionally extortionist. You got to tell him you need to get a new locksmith because <laughs> you know one of my old friends had a saying: it's not worth your picture window. Uh, so you don't do someone wrong because it's not worth your picture window, right? So you know. Anyway, there's it's it's bad karma, is what that is. Um, how much? <laughs> Would you say it should cost just ballparking? Well, I mean, if if you walked in and, and said, "I need you to rekey these cylinders for me," I don't have to change the finger pins on the side because that's the key. That's that's the side bit milling. I don't have to change those. All I have to do is pull out of the system a new bidding for the common area, and then key them. 
I would typically, it depends on who my client is. Sometimes I charge $6 a cylinder. Sometimes I charge 12 or 15 or 18 or sometimes I charge 25 or 35. It depends on what it is and it depends on what I can get away with, to be honest. The fact of the matter is, in, in no scenario, let, let's say you walked in and those side bit millings take extra tools, extra work, and a more expensive pin kit. I've got to charge more for that because the years spent acquiring the knowledge. But in no instance have I ever charged more than $35. And my family's been doing this since mm. before World War II. Wow. Well, well, thank you so much. I, uh, I feel like I need to buy something from you just for mm-hmm. your advice and friendliness and time here. Um, I would, I would, I would ask for a quote. Uh, I would ask him to produce a quote, and I would ask him if it's permissible to have it reviewed by other industry professionals for um, the concern that it's not in alignment with established rates. And you might also want to drop Aloa, A L O A. You could say, you know, you could call Aloa and say uh, the Associated Locksmiths of America, the national organization that his locksmith is very, very likely a member of, of which I am as well, and say, yeah, you know, you could call Aloha and say, hey, Rich Howard told me that these prices might be out of line and he thought you might shed some light on this. And while they'll backpedal and say they don't get involved, you can at least say that you called the national organization and you felt like it was called into question what you were being asked to fix an honest mistake. Okay. Uh, and I don't know if it's the local locksmith that's setting these high prices or the building owner who's the person I talked to. Uh, who There's no locksmith that's prices. charging $1,000 to cut keys and pin two cylinders. This is fantastic news. Yeah, that's where I was really – I mean, I am perfectly happy paying a reasonable amount for our screw-up of losing a key, but not not an extortionate amount and it confirms that it was crazy. Good. Um, okay, well, hopefully, wish me luck. I will try following your suggestions here, and um, and maybe I, I'll, if I'm successful, I, I'll let you know somehow. And if I'm not, I may <laughs> I may need uh, to call you again for a little more. You're welcome advice. to call me again. I, you know, I will will monetize this conversation somehow, some way, at some point in the near or distant future. It's all good. Okay. Well, I I very much appreciate it, and have a wonderful day, Richard. Same to you, sir. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.